Let's begin with part one of our CSS series. So in order to follow along for the upcoming lectures, make sure to have the file demo.html open in your browser. We'll be using this one during the entire section. Also, you'll need to open the same document in your code editor. So perfect, so when you're ready, we can get started. Back now to the Bootstrap site, where we're going to start with the CSS part one. So first, we're going to start with the typography. We have the options to use the HTML headings from H1 to H6. And with Bootstrap, we also have the other options to use classes from H1 to H6. For example, for an H1, you're going to use either the HTML tag or the class H1 in order to have a font size of 36 pixels. And for an H2, you'd have a font size of 30 pixels. Let's switch to the code view for a quick demonstration. On the top, we have hello world, which is wrapped in an h1 tag, and we're going to change to h2 just to see how this looks. Now, on the browser view, we have hello world. Now, as an h2, we're just going to revert back to h1. We're going to make another example now by changing the h1 to a p tag. So that's going to be a paragraph now like the other paragraph, hello world. Here it is, and now to this p tag, we're going to add a class of h1, and we're going to see what happens by going back to the browser. So we're going to save, then reload the page, and here it is. We have our h1, which has been applied by using the class of h1. Still under typography, we're going to see an example of secondary text, so just right here, by using the small tags. And here as well, we have the options to use the small tags or the small class that comes with Bootstrap in order to create the secondary text, just like this. And for this demo, I'd like to jump straight to the emphasis section in order to introduce you to the bold and italics. A bold text can be rendered by using the strong elements, like this example. As for italic text, we're going to use the em tags, like this. So we're going to make some example with uh, our template by going back to the source code and we're going to apply a small tags. So inside the h1 tag, which is a block element, a small tags is an inline element. So that needs to be inside a block element. So here it is. And now we're going to go to our template, save, and then reload the page again. So here is our secondary text. We have another example of small tags and for that we're going to go check out the footer of this document. Here it is. So we have the small tags, which is wrapping this text, copyright, all rights reserved. Small tags is usually used to indicate that this is fine print, and this is like used in the legal context. So we're going to see how this looks now in the browser by going further down. So here is our footer, and we can see that this is, that looks like fine print. And by going back to the code editor, we're going to remove this tag just to demonstrate. So without the small text now, we're going to save and reload the page again. And here it is. Now we have a regular paragraph. So back to the code, I'm going to now revert to the original version. Here it is. Still on the topic of the emphasis, I'm going to show you a class, the class of lead, and that comes with Bootstrap in order to make a piece of text or a paragraph stand out compared to the rest of the document. And if we check out the paragraph on the top, so the previous container here, we have a regular paragraph, and this one is another paragraph with the class of lead. Back to our source code, we're going to reproduce the same layout by using a class lead on a paragraph. So for that, we're going to go to the third row of our document. So that's the third row in which you have the table section. And right under, you have this paragraph. So by looking at the browser, we're going to see that right under, next to a table, we have this paragraph. So this is the one that we want to change to something bigger by using the class lead. So in the code editor again, we're going to find the opening tag of the paragraph and then we're going to write class lead. So we're going to reload the page. So here it is. We now have a paragraph that stands out compared to the rest of the documents. 
So in the code now, I'm going to remove the class and revert back to the original. So next, what we want to check is abbreviation. There is an HTML tag that allows to display an expanded version of a content whenever the user hover over this piece of text. So we're going to see that now with an example. For example, we have HTML, that means Hypertext Markup Language. It is wrapped in the ABBR tag, and to which we have added an attribute of title, and that includes the expanded version of HTML meaning that every time the user hover over HTML, he'll be able to see the expanded version of this acronym. We're going to do an example now in our template, so we're going to go to the first row. I'm going to use the HTML example that I'm going to add, I'm going to append it to my second paragraph, So, and I'm going to wrap this text in this tag. And then what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try to hover over this text and see what happens. So now after reloading the page, I can see my text HTML, but there is not much happening when I'm hovering over the text, so let's see why. That's because we also need to add this attribute, the title, in which we're going to add the expanded version of the acronym. So let's do the same now for our template. We're going to add an attribute title in which we're going to add hypertext markup language and see what happens now after reloading the page. So now we can see like a dotted line under HTML. And what happens when we hover over? We can see a question mark and the title showing up. So that's a cool feature that already comes with HTML in order to improve the user experience. Next, we want to look at the block quotes. There is a convenient way to display quotes by using the block quote tag. And Bootstrap 3 has some nice styling associated with the block quotes. So in our code editor, we're going to insert another paragraph and add some lorem ipsum. And we're just going to keep two lines. That's enough. Then we're going to wrap this paragraph in block quote tags. Let's see how this renders in our browser. So by reloading the page, so we now have another second paragraph, which is slightly indented and with more margin left and right. So this is the blog quote. Also, it comes with a nice border that is normally visible on the left of the quote, but it's not showing because it's blending with uh, the rest of the content because that's the same color of the background. So for that, what we're gonna do is change the color of the border for that, we're going to do inspect element and find target the right element by using the inspector tool. Once we could locate the right element, which is block quote, we're just going to check out on the right the style. And here we have all this type of the block code. So we're going to copy, then go back to our code editor. We're going to paste in the style. So we have a style which is applied right after the bootstrap style. So we can see the link on the top. So we're going to indent a bit in order to keep things clean and readable. So as I was saying, so there is already a link to the bootstrap file. And whatever comes next within the style section, this is our custom style. And we're going to remove the three first lines because right now we're just interested in customizing the border left, for which we're going to change the color to a dark gray. So let's check out now in the browser, so how this looks. So now we can see that we have a nice dark gray border on the left of our block quote. It's possible with Bootstrap to identify the source of a quote by adding a footer inside our block quote element. And in order to achieve that, we just need to add another element, which is footer, inside the block quote, and then insert the name of the author, just like this example. So we're going to try that right now by going back to the source code. We're going to go inside the block quote element and we're going to add a footer element and we're going to add an author, just anyone. And then we're going to go back to the browser to see the result. Nice. So now we have an author for this quote and that comes with nice style. Next, we're going to see that we also have the options to have an alternate display 
and compared to the first example, we can see that this is aligned to the left. And underneath, we can also align into the right. And this can be achieved by using the class block quote reverse. And by viewing in the browser now, let's see how this looks. So here we have our quote, which is completely aligned to the right. I'm going to revert back to the original now. So I think that looks better to the left. Now we're going to look at some example of unordered and ordered lists. So an unordered list can be created by using the UL tags. And as for the ordered list, this can be created by using the OL tags. And for the list as well, Bootstrap 3 provides with uh, built-in styles in order to customize a list in a second just by using a class. So we'll see that in a second. And for that, we're going to create another row. So by writing a div with a class of row, because we'll need to have some list in order to make that example. And inside this row, inside this div, I'm going to create an unordered list to which I'm going to add three list items. And so by simply copying the first list and pasting underneath, you can just create an order list by changing the tags from UL to OL. So let's see how this looks now in the browser. So we're going to see that we have two lists, a first list with bullet points and another one with numbers because this is an ordered list. And for the sake of making this demonstration as nice as possible, I'm going to change the layout by using the grid system classes, and for that I'm going to use colmd-6. So that's going to allow the two lists to be next to each other on the web page. That's going to look much nicer. So here it is. We now have our two lists that are displayed on the same row. Perfect. So now we're going to go back to the CSS demonstration and check out what's included in the CSS documentation for the list. So we're going to customize the second example of the list on the right, and we're going to see on the documentation that it is possible to inline a list by using one single class in order to display it just like this example. And for that, we're going to use a class which is list inline. So we're just going to keep the class and not the double quote. So just fixing everything by adding a double quote then. You're going to save and then reload the page. Check out the demo page. And here it is. So now we have an inline list and that was pretty easy to achieve by just using one class, list inline. Now we can see that it is also possible to unstyle a list by just using one class and for the purpose of this demonstration we're going to add another unordered list inside one list item. You can pick any list item and inside of this one you're going to add another unordered list with whichever number of list items you want. I'm going to add two. And let's see how this looks now. So here is the result. We now have a nested unordered list inside our unordered list. And for this demo, we're going to install the second list by grabbing this class, which is list install. And you're going to add this class inside the second unordered list. So the one which is nested. Let's see now. So after reloading the page, so here it is. So now we have that we have a second list, which is not styled at all. 